Hello guys, welcome back to Box Mining, the channel that offers you all the crypto knowledge you need and turn you into an expert. You're probably wondering what the future web will be like and I trust you guys with good intention. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're in the right channel because the world wide web just got a lot more complicated. Although that's not entirely true, it's always been complicated, but that's not the point. There's an increased awareness of web 3.0 and there are just so many jargons in the space, it's hard to keep up, isn't it? That's why I'm here to break down all the jargons for you in this video so you never feel like an outsider again. Hi there, my name is Jamie and today I'm going to talk about Web3, aka the feature of the web. This is a really important topic. If you want to stay up to date on how we'll change our lives in a new feature, make sure you watch the entire video to get the full picture. And without further ado, let's get into the topic. What is Web3? Web3 is the next stage of the web evolution that will rely on decentralized technologies such as peer-to-be -peer networking, personal clouds and distributed data storage. What? What? what the f in order to explain what Web3 is, we need to go back in time and see how we got Web3 in the first place. First, we have Web 1.0, which is the baby version of the internet. Remember those old CRT monitors which make weird noises while connecting? That's basically Web 1.0. You can read text on websites and click different links. You can also send an email, but you can't even attach a document or an image. Or maybe someday, if you're feeling super lucky, you can maybe download an image, but it'll probably take you half a day. Now you understand how valuable a JPEG is. Do I look like a JPEG? I know a lot of the viewers who are watching this channel are millennials, so probably don't remember much of those days, but that was how the internet got started. It was mainly used in the year of 1990 to 2005, and it had a very small amount of creators, but a huge amount of consumers. And then web 2.0 came around. Of course, there isn't a specified time frame of when exactly 1.0 ended or when 2.0 started. Everything is sort of hazy and oftentimes users just go with the transition without realizing it, to be honest. 2.0 is the interactive version of 1.0. Since you can not only read, but you can also write on the internet as well. This is why there are a lot more content creators in 2.0 since we have, you know, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, so everyone has the power to share content on the internet. The ability to not only read but write as well has increased the value of the internet drastically. Almost everyone is using internet via their smartphones or iPads or laptops, and the internet really begins to be a big part of everyone's life. But at the same time, it also highlights the flaws of 2.0. As the world is shrinking, we care more about our privacy and how to protect our data. And there's no argument there that we have some serious concern over censorship and centralization. Twitter, Facebook, and other large social media corporations each have the right to control who's allowed or who spend on their platforms. Not to mention the intermediaries in Web 2.0. Yes, you still get to send your messages to your friends, but you have to do it via Facebook or WhatsApp, or if you're trying to book a hotel, you have to book it via Trafago, and all these middlemen are extracting value and collecting personal data, and it's completely unnecessary. Another problem that has arisen is a single failure point. If someone is trying to hack an app, all they have to do is to attack the app itself. In short, we need more security, we need a safer way to store our data without censorship, and this is why the emergence of Web 3.0. The transition started with Bitcoin, but of course not just funny. Bitcoin is just a scratch off the surface, and after the creation of Bitcoin, people can't help but wonder, what are the use cases of decentralization? Why can't we apply decentralization to websites as well? And who to say we can't give power back to the users of 
of the internet. So not just a contract will be decentralized, but also the web page. This way, websites will be completely unstoppable and communication will be secured. Well, we all know some certain countries love banning certain websites because up until today, you can selectively block sites that you don't want your citizen to see. But with Web 3.0 vision, it can never happen. It will change the way we interact with each other, you know, how we work, how we learn, how we game, or even how we shop. We're probably still in Web 2.0, but the transition is slowly happening. Of course, no one's gonna tell you when exactly 3.0 starts, but it's happening. Why? Because we're moving towards a phase that we can actually use Web 3.0 in real life. For example, the switch from file storage on Google Drive to Filecoin, from banks to Metamask, from fiat money to crypto. If these examples are not enough, or you feel like these examples are too finance-based, I'm telling you, you can even apply blockchain to gaming. A really good example would be Axie Infinity. For those of you who have never heard of Axie, basically it's a play to earn um, game and it's particularly popular in the Philippines and some other Asian countries. People in the Philippines can earn more than their average salary simply by playing Axie. So I would say Axie Infinity definitely contributed to the blockchain mass adoption because a successful blockchain game is when people playing the game without realizing it, it is a blockchain game. Alrighty, so what's the government's stance on this? Of course, they're not gonna like it. Web 3.0 means the government and the big corporations will not have full control over financial transactions or personal data, and they do not like the idea of it. But even though there might be some struggle in the beginning, once it hits some tipping point, I think we can expect a lot of rapid innovation and disruption. And we are still, however, very early in the development of this and have a lot left to learn. Web 3.0 goes far beyond the initial initial used case of cryptocurrencies, it will cryptographically connect data from individuals, corporations and machines with efficient machine learning algorithms, which is going to lead to some very new market opportunities and associated business models. The point is to build tourist decentralization together without the intrusion of Uncle Sam. The concern from governments and big corporations are actually a good sign because it shows that Web 3.0 is something massive and could disrupt the entire tech industry. That's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you, you learned something new and hopefully I didn't make things too complicated. I'm still very new in this channel so if there's anything I could do to improve, I'd love to know and I'll really really appreciate any feedback. If there are some other topics or projects you would like me to cover, do leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't be shy to hit that like button and subscribe to the Box Mind channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more regular updates and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.